thank you for, for inviting Genocide Biologics for presenting a few insights so rapidly about the company. We are a gene therapy company and we are focusing on uh, retinal uh, diseases leading to blindness. We have two main uh, technology platforms. The first one is uh, the mitochondrial targeting uh, sequence. And we are at a late stage development to treat labor hereditary optic neuropathy. And my talk will be focusing on this uh, aspect. And we have another platform on optogenetics and we are in an early stage for a first in human study in retinitis pigmentosa. So the company is based in France and we were uh, founded in 2012. So let's focus on uh, Lumivox gene therapy in LHON. You, you know very well the disease, so very rapidly, you know it's a disease affecting young people in their 20s, 30s usually. Uh, it's a terrible disease. Uh, patients uh, got a drop of vision in the first eye and sequentially a few weeks later or a few months later, uh, the second eye is dropping vision. So within one year, these patients will become blind. And the, the, ND4, the, muta the mutations on the ND4 mitochondrial gene are the most uh, frequent ones. Represented, representing 75% of LHON. And uh, Lumivoc is targeting these mutations, Lumivoc, uh, which is a gene therapy we have been developing. And importantly, uh, these uh, mutations are causing uh, uh, a severe clinical form of LHON comparing to other uh, primary mutations. So let's move on to uh, the key uh, milestones for, for this project. So we filed uh, for EMA registration a few uh, days ago, actually, on September 14th. And we are expecting a decision from EMA second half of next year, because there is, as you know, processes to, to, to move forward. And uh, we don't have the same schedule for uh, FDA for the US because we have uh, a still a pivotal study which is ongoing, which is called REFLECT, which has been asked by the FDA. And we'll get the results of this uh, study uh, next year, so in Q2, and then we'll be moving to uh, BLA for a submission to the US. That's why the schedule is a bit different between Europe and the US. Um, so we have two phase three trials, reverse and rescue, which are completed, which have been designed with the EMA very closely. Um, the design is uh, similar between both trials. So patients were had the one eye treated with the active drug, with Vimivoc, via intravitreal injection, and the other eye had a sham injection. So as you know, uh, sham injection uh, means that it's mimicking a real intravitreal injection, but no product is injected in the eye. The main difference between reverse and rescue is the timing of administration. In reverse, patients were treated when they had the vision loss between six months and one year, and in rescue, patients were treated earlier with a vision loss within six months. So here is a summary of the results of these two pivotal studies. Um, these studies had a follow-up at two years uh, post-injection, and then patients uh, could enter into a, a follow-up study. Um, so in summary, uh, patients were unilaterally injected with Lumivoc, and they got a bilateral improvement. On average, five lines of improvement versus Nadir. If you look in details into these results for treated eyes, the improvement is uh, 28 letters and uh, 26 letters versus Nadir. And as you can see, the Sharma is improved as well at the level of 24 and 23 letters. Looking at the responder rates, if we take the threshold of 15 letters improvement versus Nadir, which is commonly accepted to be clinically meaningful, even if we can state that this level is quite conservative, 
uh, you see that the, the rates of improvement are above 70%, so 76% for reverse, 71% for rescue. And uh, importantly, a few uh, weeks ago, we released uh, the interim analysis of our data from our long-term follow-up study showing that the effect is maintained uh, up to three years post-administration. Actually, some patients had even four years of follow-up and we uh, found as well uh, maintenance of the effects of the effect of Lumivoc in our first tenure study, because we have right now five years of follow-up post-injection. So as you know, it's extremely important to show that the effect is maintained because it's a one-time treatment with gene therapy. So because we got uh, this bilateral improvement when patients were unilaterally treated with uh, Lumivoc, we tried to understand the mechanism behind this bilateral improvement. To do so, we performed a non-human primate study and we really mimicked the phase three trial. So monkeys were unilaterally injected with Lumivoc with an equivalent dose of a dose used in humans. And then we looked at uh, the visual systems uh, three months uh, post-injection. So we found out uh, obviously Lumivoc DNA in the injected eyes, so in uh, in the ipsilateral uh, visual systems, and these are the green bars. But more importantly, we find out uh, Lumivoc DNA in the contralateral non-injected eyes, so in the anterior segment of this eyes, as well in the retina of the contralateral non-injected eyes and in the optic nerves of the non-injected eyes, and as well in the optic chiasm. So we could demonstrate that there is a transfer of Lumivoc DNA from the injected eyes uh, to the non-injected eyes, and the probable route of this transfer is via the optic chiasm. So because the control, well, we lost actually our control group in these phase three trials because the sham eyes improved and the control group was formed by the sham eyes. So uh, following um, internal discussions and as well discussions with regulators, we decided to perform an indirect comparison versus an external control group. So to do so in the treated group, we included all Lumivoc data, meaning all patients treated in phase three trials, reverse rescue, and as well from the long-term follow-up study up to the last available observation. And obviously, we included in this treated group sham and treated eyes because sham eyes improved. And as you, as you we discussed previously, we have a mechanism why we got this contralateral effect. To build the external control group, we included natural history studies, so uh, non-treated patients, so we included a reality natural history study, which is a study we have been performed. And as well, to make the sample size of this external control group enough large and representative of the population of ND4 patients, we uh, included additional natural history studies and we select them when they provided individual patient data. So we could add 10 natural history studies so in this way, we built a real natural history database, including uh, patients' uh, individual data. And we matched uh, this external control group. So obviously, we selected patients who uh, had a confirmed and deformed mutation. And as well, we selected a patient's age of 15 years old or older, because we had to match with reverse and rescue population and in reverse and rescue patients were included when they were 15 years old or older. So here are the results. You see the evolution of visual acuity over time in pink, uh, the treated eyes from Lumivoc data and in blue, the non-treated eyes from natural history studies. We started the indirect comparison at 12 months uh, post-vision loss because at that time, 
patients in, from Lumivoc data were effectively treated. So 93% of the patients from Lumivoc data were treated at 12 months post vision loss because uh, as, as, uh, as a reminder, these patients were included when they had a vision loss within one year, so they could be treated during this period of time. Importantly, you see that uh, obviously treated eyes improve in terms of visual acuity in contrast with non-treated eyes. You see that the, the curve in blue is, is flat. The difference starts to be a statistically significant 18 months post onset of vision loss. And then it gets more and more pronounced over time. And importantly, at 48 months post vision loss, the, the difference between treated and non-treated eyes reaches 16.5 letters. And this number is important because it's above the 15 letters, which are considered to be clinically meaningful. So this is really an important, uh, important new analysis, and this is the, the cornerstone of our EMA uh, file. Safety uh, is good. We treated almost uh, 200 patients with Lumivoc. There's no uh, systemic issue because the biodissemination of Lumivoc in the blood is negligible. The main uh, adverse event, it's an ocular adverse event, uh, which is intraocular inflammation, quite classical with gene therapy. So it's likely related to Lumivoc. The good thing with Lumivoc, it's the, this intraocular inflammation is mostly mild and is responsive to con conventional treatment, mostly corticosteroids eye drop and resolutive with our sequela. So we talked a bit about reflex study. Reflex study is a pivotal study, which, is, has, been, which has been designed with, in close collaboration with the FDA. The FDA really wanted us to assess uh, the effect of a bilateral treatment with Lumivoc. That's why the design is a bit different from reverse and rescue. There is one arm patients were bilaterally treated with Lumivoc and for the other arm, patients got uh, one eye injected with Lumivoc and the other eye injected with a real intravitreal injection of placebo. And this trial is fully recruited with 98 patients and we'll get the results of the primary endpoint uh, um, next year. So in Q2, 2021, the primary endpoint is set up 1.5 years post uh, treatment administration. And as soon as we get uh, the result from this primary endpoint, we'll be um, moving to submission uh, for uh, US uh, approval with uh, BLA submission. So we got uh, compassionate uses uh, ongoing uh, for uh, Lumivox. So uh, in the US uh, through um, expanded access INDs, uh, five patients have been treated. They were all treated with a bilateral treatment. And we got as well a compassionate use running uh, in France, which is uh, granted uh, by the um, French agency on case-to-case -case basis. And uh, until now, seven patients uh, were treated, most of them with a bilateral treatment. And we have additional requests which have been approved by the French agency. So patients will be treated soon uh, in, in October. So I would like to warmly thank uh, patients, uh, investigators, all the study teams uh, who have been really uh, working uh, uh, with us to, to move forward uh, uh, this uh, uh, product to, to late stage development. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your attention.